Welcome to Light of the Valley. It is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, continuing on uh, applying God's Word into our life as believers. This particular Sunday, we're looking at the James passage that really works to govern our speech and our listening. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. So we're going to focus on that through our worship, as well as God opening ears, loosening tongues to hear his word and to proclaim it. Most everything you need today will be in your worship folder, including our opening hymn, and that starts on page three, This is My Father's World. That's how we begin our worship today, and we ask for God to bless you as you worship him here today.
lesson for today comes from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 to the first part of verse 7. What we hear in Isaiah is a prophecy, one that we're going to hear fulfilled in our gospel reading today of a great and wonderful thing that our Lord will do for us, that he will loosen tongues, that he will open ears, he'll make the lame walk. So we hear, say it to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. This is the word of our Lord. Um, today's second Bible reading comes from us from James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. These are the verses that will uh, serve as a basis for our service for today. Um, we hear, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of uh, first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they had heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their, in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and see God.
So have you ever heard the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Any of you ever said it? You know, okay, so I'm going to do something that maybe your parents won't be happy about. You know, that, that really is not a true phrase. Because, yeah, sticks and stones will break the bones. Yeah, that could never hurt. Words will never hurt me. I think we already know. Words do hurt. I mean, when somebody yells at us, that hurts. When somebody tells me that they don't like me, that hurts. If somebody says a lie about me, it hurts. Words hurt. We know that. We try to make you know that sometimes when people say it isn't true, we don't want it to hurt you. That's why we teach you that phrase, we don't want the words to hurt you. But instead of saying that words don't hurt, we have to realize words do hurt. But you know what? Words also heal. Words help. Words build people up. Words do some amazing thing, and you know, it's the Word of God that fixes us the best, because it's what God does and what He tells us that takes away all the bad things that we've done, even if we have said mean things to people, even if we have lied, even if we have hurt people with our words, Jesus takes that away from us by His perfect life and His death on the cross. So that we, knowing what Jesus has done for us, knowing he has told us, he's used his word to heal us, to build us up. We turn around and now we try to work on ourselves, that we try really hard to say things that are good, to say things that build people up, to not say angry words, to not say things that will hurt people, but only what's good. So let's... Pray to God. Let's ask Him for help to say only what's good, to be, as we're going to talk about today, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word. And by you told us that we are fixed, we are healed. You've taken away all the bad things we've done. Help us to be quick to listen to people, that we would use what we say, the words, only to help people and to build them up. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your folks. Thanks for coming up this morning. We're going to continue by singing our next hymn, and that is hymn 353, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, hymn 353.
Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on this morning was the second reading we heard from James chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. But as we get meditation on that word, let us pray. May the words of our lips, the meditation of our hearts, be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we appreciate fast talk. No, not, not the kind of fast talk that you hear at the end of a drug commercial that try to announce all the side effects so quickly that you can't actually hear what they are so as to not dissuade you from the product. But we like it when conversation moves smoothly, moves quickly, and we get rid of all those annoying ums, ahs, pauses, dead silence that we can get rid of. So a lot of videos you see, especially with the advent of YouTube, you see a lot of quick cuts. Quick cuts designed specifically just to cut off that little bit of dead air, that little bit of hesitation, those moments where you don't quite say everything you want to say right the way you want to say it. Because admittedly, our time is valuable. Our time is limited. If you can give me the information I need in a quick, succinct sort of way that I can track it and know it, it saves me the time to then go and do the thing that maybe I need the information for. Or we just flat out like it when dialogue is very snappy, very rapid fire. When somebody says something almost without thinking in response to them and you realize, well, that was really well said. I wish I could be that clever. I wish I could have wit that quick that didn't need to wait for a moment or think about it, but just, I said it, and it was perfect. Because we do. I think if anything, we have to sometimes maybe stop ourselves from being so quick to speak. Because we pride ourselves on being the first to the punchline, the first to the zinger, the first to the pun. And you kind of smile at yourself when you get it in right away. But then James comes along, and he says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Slow to speak. I don't value slowness in speech. I don't like when people drag things out and just are long-winded. In fact, if anything, that makes me grow impatient, that gets me upset, that gets me angry because like we just said, like we just acknowledged, my time is very valuable, I only have so much time that is given to me on any day, I can't increase it, but it can sure be wasted. And so the longer this person takes to talk, the longer they take to get to their point, the longer the story goes on, I don't appreciate slow speaking. I get angry. And in that anger, I sin. When was the last time you said something genuinely good when you were angry? When we're angry, that's that moment when all of those feelings have bubbled over and they come out in the ways that are meant to hurt people. It's, it's like the tongue is like a rifle meant to shoot these words that bombard people, words that cut, words that wound, words that hurt. It's the child who's frustrated with his parents because they have once again ruined his life, and so I'm going to my room and I am never coming out, and just so you know, I'm going to slam this door behind me so that you know how serious I am. Or the parent. The parent who jumps down the child's throat when they start is saying something, start asking a question, and assume this is where it's going, and start berating them on everything they have done. All the mistakes they've made, all the bad choices, without ever stopping to listen to the child. It's that moment when 
that person, friend, family member, spouse, whatever fails you, and it's that one more time, that one more time, too many, this is too much, I am angry, I am upset, I'm not going to go to take you to task on this thing that you've done wrong, but let me hit you with all these other things that you also haven't done. And the words come out, rapid fire, one after another. Or just we say three simple words, because we're in a bad mood. We're unhappy. I don't like what this person did. And the shot goes out. I hate you. We are quick to speak. Sometimes because we want to be the first one to get the word in. A lot of times it's because it's the anger that bubbles up, the anger that then comes out, the anger that then wants to wound and it wants to hurt people. That's why James has to pull us all aside and say, hey, wait a minute. Be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to become angry because Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. How many times have my words been said to wound? How many times have I said things to cut people down? How many times have I said things to make people feel humiliated? How many times have I said bad things about other people so that I would feel better about myself? We are quick to speak. And when we are quick to speak to wound people, recognize we're not just wounding that person, but in fact, we're hurting our relationship also with God because when we wound that person, we are doing the same thing to God. And for this, for our quick speaking, we need forgiveness. But as quick as we can be with our words to wound, it doesn't mean that the words in and of themselves are a bad thing, as if we just should never talk. But actually, a lot of wonderful things have happened through words. It was by speaking. God said, let there be. And our world came into existence. Let there be sun, moon, stars. Let there be water. Let there be birds in the, in the air. Let there be plants and animals. Let there be life. God spoke and it happened. And God didn't stop speaking there. In fact, in some ways I think we can say he's the epitome of being Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Quick to listen, if you think about that fact that Jesus is always at the ready to hear your prayers. That even while he was spending time in his earthly ministry, he was quick to listen to people. Slow to speak. Not quick, he wasn't looking for to get that, that quick <clears throat> remark in there right at the moment, that zinger that would put his disciples in their place but he would deal with people appropriately, deliberately, take his time with them. He would ask them questions so that they would get thinking about what they have done, where their priorities are in life, what they have come to experience. And I guess you could say he was slow to speak because his word took like 1,500 years to form the Bible that we have to speak through 40 different people over that time frame, even chunks of, of time where there is no speaking from God. But instead, just telling us at the right times when we needed it, God's promises, His work, how He has fulfilled it, what He has done. It's slow to become angry with His disciples, with his enemies, to take all those moments, those deliberate moments, to teach his disciples, and when they just weren't getting it, you don't hear Jesus go, come on, guys, seriously. He 
you have Jesus teach again and again and again. And then with his enemies, although to us it looks like, Lord, why do you let them go on? Why do you let the wicked prosper? Why don't you just come down and smite them already? Because he's patient with us, not wanting any of us to perish. But in fact, giving wicked people long life sometimes just so that they would hear his word, that they would hear him speak in. That they would come to know the Savior that we have come to know. That they would know of a God who lived that command. Who was quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. A Jesus who did that for us. Because that Jesus speaks to us of forgiveness. That no matter how many times we have hurt people with words, no matter how many times we've wounded, He is forgiven. No matter how many times we messed up, He didn't. And so He was that perfection in our place. He did it perfectly as our substitute. Because He knew we would have to keep a tight rein on our tongue. He spoke to you his word, a word which saves you, a word that he chose to speak to you to give us birth through the word of truth that we might become a kind of first fruits of all he created to make you new, to make you pure, to make you holy by gifting you with his perfection. And now he wants you to speak. Yeah, the first part is being quick to listen. Absolutely. We have to listen to people because we have to understand people. We have to know where they're coming from. We have to know what their problems are. We have to be active listeners. And then slow to speak. Slow to speak not meaning that we should just really talk very slowly. But thoughtfully. Deliberately, purposefully. Because the right words can do amazing things. Patient, well thought out words. We know that just as quickly as a word can cut someone, as a word can destroy someone, a word can build someone up. A word can bring comfort and healing. A word spoken between two warring nations can bring peace. A word can build someone up for an entire day and stick with them throughout their lifetime. A word can fix what is broken. But you know what? It's really hard to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. But you think in life, and this is the way that I personalize it, think about talking to somebody who is anti what you believe, who believes something different from what you believe, who believe things that you know objectively from God's word, the word that he has spoken is false. And when they start proclaiming it to you as truth, I know my anger rises. I know that I don't like what I hear. I know that when I hear somebody speaking false things about my God, then I get angry. I want to shout them down. I want to shut them down. I want to show them how everything from this Bible is true and that they are so very wrong and that they are stupid for believing this. I want to destroy them with my words. That's what my anger wants. It does not produce righteousness. For them to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, this is not something that comes naturally. It's something we have to work on. And the way we work on it is by talking to those people who make us angry. I know a lot of times, and we give, and this is good advice, 
We say, if you can't say anything nice at all, don't say anything. If somebody makes you angry, just walk away before you do something you regret. And sometimes you're going to have to do that. But then there's those other moments where you have to realize what James is saying. James is not saying, don't talk. James says, be slow to speak. To pause for you. And that person, in that moment of anger, when you are really getting riled up with them, to step back for a minute and see them as God sees them. To see that this person, no matter what they do to you, no matter how much they aggravate you, no matter how much they anger you, to step back and say, you know what? God thought enough of you, of this person right in front of me, that he would give his entire life to them. That God thought it was important enough for this person, valued this person enough, that he willingly gave his life. He died for them. He shed his blood to buy them back from a life of sin. He gave it all so that they would be saved. If I'm having a tough time being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, to step back from it, look at this person and say, God shed his blood for them. God loved them that much. Can I love them the way God loves them? The way that God loved me? Because we can step back and think of all the hurtful words that we've said, and you can think how angry I should have made God. How he had every right to just smite me out of his wrath and his rage because I have been a horrible, rotten sinner who has used his words to cut people down, to vent my anger at people, to lash out at them, to want to destroy them. But my God didn't act out, lash out at me that way. He said he was still quick to listen to my prayers. Speaking his word slowly, deliberately, so that I would hear it, that I would believe it. And it's not smote me in his anger, but has dealt with me patiently, continually forgiving me, always loving me. Because God gave us a time he created us. He doesn't want that tongue to be silent. He wants that tongue to speak. He wants that tongue to act. He wants that tongue to proclaim the great things that he has done. We've been made pure by our God. He has forgiven our sins, and he's given us this tongue so that we would proclaim that good and perfect gift from above to other people. That we would tell people who are, are in lives that are shaky and crumbling to tell them about a father who does not change like shifting shadows, who is always consistent, who always keeps his promise, who always loves us and always forgives us. And sometimes we may have to speak this very deliberately and intentionally because maybe they won't hear it the first time but maybe the second maybe the third maybe the fourth maybe the twentieth and to see through when the things come up that make you angry to push aside see this person that Christ shed his blood for and remember, it's not about winning every argument. It's not about getting my point. It's not about me getting in my zinger, my, my quick response. But it's, can I get this person to know what Jesus has done for them? Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's going to change a life. That's the only thing that's going to save a life. My anger won't do that. But God's word will. So Lord, you've made us. You've perfected us. You've clothed us with Christ's righteousness. 
made our tongue new. Lord, help us to be quick to listen, to understand where people are at, to be slow to speak, that we wouldn't speak rapid fire comments that tear down and hurt people, but to speak deliberately of what you have done for us. And even as sometimes people will not listen, to not give in to anger, but to deal with them patiently, giving them the word of truth that God will plant in them, that they will be saved as we are saved. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll confess our Christian faith with the musical version here of the Apostles' Creed. It starts on page 8 and goes into page 9.
And you can put that in the offering plate as it comes around or hand it to me at the end of the service today. So that in mind, let's continue our worship by gathering our gifts and offerings to our Lord.
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. And serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs>
throw away. Uh, so go check that out if you're interested at all, and take whatever you'd like. Don't worry. Just don't. I guess don't take the trailer out of there. There's a trailer back there. Um, and somebody's grill. Somebody's grill is back there too. I think they want that back eventually, but it's been here for a while. Um, so with that, also just note the uh, other things that are coming up. Other announcements in the in the bulletin. Choir starts tomorrow night, 6.15. Uh, we'll meet here um, in the sanctuary. Um, and you can see uh, the other things that are also coming up. Uh, but one thing we are going to do today, because this is kind of like the fall kickoff, even though we're still feeling uh, some good summer weather yet, uh, we have a special potluck planned for today. So uh, let me go ahead and lead you in prayer, and then we'll conclude our service for today. So let's... Let's return thanks to our Lord. Uh, if you know the prayer, go ahead and pray it along with me. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. So as soon as I get out of here, you guys go ahead, you go and enjoy, get some lunch, enjoy some fellowship, say hello to the people you've come to worship with. Those of you who are heading out, I'll get to the back so I can shake your hands and wish you God's blessings on you.